This is a new model that OpenAI has. It's called Whisper, and it's audio-centric. It's very good for text to audio, audio to text, and translation. But you might say, I mean, we've had this for a while. Cognitive services had text to audio, audio to text, but this one is really efficient. And the other feature that I really like is the translation. I'm going to demo to you where you can give it an audio on any language. You don't need to tell it what language it is. It's going to translate it to English. How does it detect the language? It's amazing. So, you know, we're going to give it French, Spanish, and Arabic, and it'll just translate it for you. What I'm going to talk about is the introduction to Whisper. I'm going to show you how to develop an application using OpenAI, and then we'll take that application and just flip it so that it works with Azure OpenAI. There are two different packages, one for OpenAI, one for Azure OpenAI. But once you have it working in OpenAI, it's very easy to make it work with Azure OpenAI. Intro to Whisper. Whisper is an advanced AI model designed for efficient audio transcription and translation. So transcription actually means moving text to audio, audio to text. Translation is taking one language and giving it to you in another language. But they have a set of models. I'm just showing you some of them. And what I was going to say is that it takes any language, translates it to English the demo I'm going to give you. But there is the capability of this model. It can take from one language and give you another language, even if it's not English. But I don't have a demo on that one. Yeah, these are all the languages they have. But you can see there's quite a few languages here. So it excels in recognizing spoken language in real time and has a robust multilingual support, making it versatile for various applications. So some of the use cases that you might want to do used this model with transcription, changing from audio to text, text to audio, translation. And then there is voice command. This is a use case, but I put checks here for the demos that I'm going to give you. I'm giving a demo on transcription, a demo on translation, not on voice command. If you want to use Whisper with OpenAI, they have these models. Whisper 1 and this Whisper 1 is used for audio and text translation. TTS1 is used for text to audio. So there's only one NuGet package that you need to do this. It's the OpenAI. And the class that is really the entry point into all of this is this OpenAI client. This is the, the class that we're going to use in dependency injection to get access to it from all the classes and so on. OK, so let's go through a demo. We'll create a .NET Razor Pages application, .NET New Razor, and the, the name of the app is going to be Whisper Web Open AI. CD Whisper. We need to add the Open AI package, .NET Add Package Open AI. This is the only package we need. And we go into Visual Studio Code. I want to add some app settings here. Be this, and I'm going to put it in this here. So these are things that I need. I need a key from OpenAI, and then I'm going to create three pages. One is going to demonstrate how to do audio to text, the other one is text to audio, and the other one is translation. For audio to text, I need this model. For translation, I need this model. Text to audio, I need this model. All of them, they involve MP3, WAV, file, and I want to throw them into these folders. So that's the only thing that we have here. So we close this. So I go to my program.cs and I stick this in there. So this is the main object that we're going to use in all of our classes. And this is where you register it. I'm reading the key from the app settings and making this available for dependency injection. So we close this. Now, the next thing is I put online some WAV files. So I'm going to go to this site here and download those WAV files. And here it is. Let me open this up. I'm going to take this folder and drop it in my application here. This is the application I created. I'm going to drop it into the WW root folder. I just got some examples to play with. For example, this is audio to text. We're going to take some of these audios and convert them to text. I'll just grab one of them. What is the speech services? The speech service is the unification of speech attack. You see, this is a different accent of English. So this is, we're going to do audio to text. Text to audio is empty because you're going to take text and then create audio in here. And then translation is 
There is something say in, in Spanish. Eh, mamá, una cosa, voy a ir al supermercado por si quieres que compre algo. Había pensado en comprar dos barras de pan para el desayuno, unos tomates, unas cebollas. هل يمكنني الحصول على خدمة الإنترنت هنا؟ That's a very short one. I chose very short ones because I didn't want the zip file to be too big. So we want to add razor pages to this application with Visual Studio code. I have C# Sharp Dev Kit. It's an an extension. So you get this Solution Explorer. For this one, I can come here and say I want to add a razor. I put in a filter razor page. So the first one I want to do is text to audio. And then I'm going to do another one, audio to text. And then a third one is going to be translation. So we have these three razor pages. So let's go to audio to text. This is the code behind. I'm going to replace all of this with this. Over here, this is the constructor and this is the dependency injection. We're in injecting the logger, which I'm not really going to use. The important thing is we're injecting this open AI client, okay? And we need the configuration to read from the app settings. Here, I'm finding out which folder I, that stuff is in because I configured it in the app settings. So I'm going to check if this folder is there or not. If it's not there, I want to create it. On the on get, what I'm going to do in the UI is I'm going to create a drop-down list with all these files in this folder. So this method here, get wave files, all it does is dynamically it goes and reads the file system and sees what wave files, what MP3 files are there, and it's just gonna create a list so that I can put them into a drop-down list. So this is what the on get does. Let's put in the UI and then I'll come back and talk about this. Let's put the UI first. So the UI is this next file, which is the CSHTML. So let's come here and put it into the UI. Instead of this stuff, I'll paste this. So what have we got in the UI? We have a form and we have a select list which gets populated with these audio files that is read here. Because the only thing this on get does is it populates audio files and there is a property here called audio files. And then I have a button. When the submit button is clicked, it's going to make a post to the same page. Hence, it would come to this on post method. In this on post method, presumably the user has selected a WAV file or a MP3 file or something. It comes in here. and. The main thing is you take the file name and with this open AI client, you get the audio client name and then you pass it to this method, transcribe audio async. That's it. You get a result and with the result to get the actual text out of it, result.value.text. And then you stick it into this view data transcription. View data transcription is going to displayed here. As simple as that. I think what became more complicated in this code is just reading the files dynamically and then uh, reading all these configurations and so on just so that it's organized. Now we can try it out. So let's go into the layout and let me add a menu item here because I just did audio to text. You know there's a privacy page here. I don't care about the privacy. So I'm going to replace this with audio to text and the actual page is audio to text. I can try it out now, but since I'm here, I'm going to make also menu items for the others because I have three pages. I'm just going to make a menu item for the text audio and a menu item for the translation. So I'm just going to repurpose these. This is text to audio to audio. Okay, translation here. That would be the page translate. It will not work yet for one simple reason. In my app settings here, I don't have the real keys. <laughs> so I made a batch file. I'm just going to do a copy because the file that has the settings, I put it in another folder and I'm just going to copy it over this. I'm going to come here and do a copy. So now if I open this app settings, you'll see that I put the real key here dot net watch. Yeah, this is what we did. Audio to text. You see dynamically read the files that I have. Speech, this one here. What is the speech services? The speech service is the unifi unification of speech, text, blah, 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 blah. So it didn't take very much time. So we did the audio to text. Okay, so the next thing is text to audio. I'll start with the code behind. 
And in the code behind, I've actually hard-coded some text as a default. So again, this is the constructor. We're injecting this open AI client. And this is where I'm sort of creating the folder if it's not there. Now, this default text, I set that as the sample data in the UI. And then when the button is clicked, this is where you do the conversion from text to audio. But this is the main method here. Generate speech text. So you give it the text, it generates the speech as binary data. All the stuff here is I'm creating a hash to give the file a unique name before I save it. Because I want to take that stream and then save it on the hard drive and link it to the UI. I'm going to show you later on that you don't even need to do that. So I'm creating a hash and I want that hash to be the name of the file. But here I'm just writing it to the file system. And then this audio file path. Let's go to the UI. I just did the code behind. The UI would be this for this scenario. Text to audio. Come here. So I have an audio control here. And the source is this audio file path, which is this baby here. Because I know what the name of the file is and I'm going to point to it. The UI, it has a text area. And the text area is pre-populated with this dummy data that I hard-coded in my code behind. When the submit button is clicked, it would come to this on post async method and that's the way it works. So I can run it now and see what's going on. Let's do a refresh here. Okay, so now I did text to audio. This is the hard-coded stuff that I put in my code. But you know, for all I care, we can take this one here. I can take this and put it here. Submit. It's sending the text and receiving the audio. So now let's see. The BC, the BC government, government and the opposition, opposition have released dueling, dueling narratives, narratives about a about mental, mental health, health facility. facility. We don't need to hear the whole story. I'm going to do a variation of this. Instead of it being saved to the hard drive, by the way, let's go and see where it is. Text audio. This is the one that was dynamically saved. The name of the file is a hash. And then I can play the it here. BC government and the opposition. So it saved it. So I'm going to give a variation of this. The variation is this. Now I'm going to put another method in the same file. Instead of it being saved to the file system, I'm going to stream it back to the browser. You can stream it. So here, you know, this is the same method. It creates a binary data. Here I copy to the memory stream. And then I return the memory stream as audio WAV. So I can use some JavaScript to point straight to this thing and get a stream. Here is some JavaScript code that I can put in the user interface so that we have another button that makes a call using JavaScript. I'll add some code here. So here I added another button, button speak, and another control, audio player. This is an audio control. This is an audio control. This is another audio control just to demonstrate the live stream. Here, when this button is clicked, this is the event handler JavaScript, it's going to read the text and make a fetch request to the endpoint that I just created here. This is a new endpoint. And it will receive a response and it will set the audio player element with this URL. And then it will play it automatically. So now I have a speak button there. Okay, so let me get another article from here. Let's go look at something else, the world. Okay, let's take this one here. Speak. From a chef's table, table to, our to our homes, homes. Discover, discover the trends, trends innovations, innovations, and personalities that are, that are redefining how we eat. This is completely streamed. Nothing is saved anywhere. Let's try Chinese text from Baidu.com. So now maybe I can take this. Okay. <laughs> The last thing we'll do is a translation. And translation is where you give it audio in any language and it's going to turn it into English. Anyways, let's do the translation. Next, open translation here. Again, I'm going to go into a different folder to grab a bunch of audios. And that's where I had a French audio, an Arabic audio, and a Spanish audio. So this is what that is doing. And then it's it's just putting it into the UI. So in the UI, I'm going to have a drop-down list as well. So let me go to the UI. So in the UI, I have a drop-down list and I have a submit button. So now we're getting audio and it's going to translate it into English text. So the transcription is going to display here. When the button is clicked, the submit comes here. Here, the method is translate audio async. You give it the file and it translates. You know, we did audio to text, but this is audio to text with a twist. 
that you're giving it German and it's going to give you the English. It's translating. It's a variation of the first case. And the model is a different one because the first model was Whisper 1. For this one, it's TTS1. It's a different model. So let's try it out. Let's go in the folder here, translation. There is the Spanish one, okay? So here, let's see what she was saying. So I'm going to choose the Spanish and click on submit. Mom, one thing. I'm going to the supermarket market in case you want me to buy something. I was thinking of buying two slices of bread for breakfast, some tomatoes, some onions. Mind you, what happened here was it took the Spanish, yeah, it turned it into yeah. English. Let us go and look at the Arabic. Is it possible for me to access the internet service here? It's, it's a very short one, the Arabic one. And the last one is the French. Whisper is an authentic recognition system. It's talking about Whisper. So I'm going to go through the last part of this. I'm going to take what we just did and just convert it so that it works with Azure OpenAI. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to stop all of this. Okay. And now this is the app we created. Whisper Web Open AI. I'm going to copy it and paste it and rename it, okay, to something else. Let me put the word Azure here. So this is the Azure version. And I've created the steps here of what I need to do to convert it. Now, what I'm going to do is copy into this new folder that I created, like I created this one now. This here is my Azure version. I need to copy a different app setting because to Azure, I have a different set of keys. So it's going to copy over the current file with a different set of keys. So now if I go in here, these are my keys for Azure OpenAI. I need a key and an endpoint. I can remove the OpenAI package, this one. I'll delete that. And then I'm going to add the Azure stuff, which is this, two package. And then it's a different service that you need to add into the program.cs. So in program.cs, this goes away because this is open AI. We put instead of it, the Azure stuff. They have different credentials and things like that. Okay, so this is done. Notice that in app settings, the main setting is AZ open AI. That's why over here it goes to AZ open AI, key AZ open AI URL. And then in all the classes that I created. Let's start with audio to text. Audio to text, I cannot use this object anymore. I have to use this one instead, the Azure version. So this one has to be converted and I think I have to resolve this. Just two places. There are just three files. This one, I'll do this and this. Now there's another problem that I have to deal with. You see all these keys, I have to put AZ before them. So might as well go to app settings development remove this az from here but then also in program.cs i have this as well okay and then one last thing we haven't done is in the translation here i should have also changed this one azure open a client let me just build .NET build just to make sure that i don't have problem. If it builds, then I think it's been converted. So let's go .NET, watch and see if it works. So let's try this. So let's go with this speech service. It works here. Text to audio, this one. So this one works. Security, Security officials. officials. Confis okay. And then let's do the Arabic because it's short. So in conclusion, thank you.